Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody on the call. Thanks very much for joining this latest Basis Technologies webinar in our regular series of webinars about DevOps and testing for SAP. Uh, today, as you can see on the screen, we're going to be uh, talking about it's a very interesting story with uh, a client uh, of Basis Technologies that we've worked with for some time at IPG into public group talking about their DevOps journey within SAP um, and how they've adopted DevOps and changed the way they're working and what they've learned along the way as they've done that. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Orhan Ozal from IPG today, um, who I'll introduce in just a second. Before we begin, as always with these things, a little bit of webinar admin. Um, all of you should be able to see the GoToWebinar control panel, either in a web browser or on your desktop, and you will see that uh, you are muted, all attendees are muted on the call at the moment. But if you do have any questions during the webinar that you'd like to ask, we would encourage you to um, submit those in the question box, and we'll take as many of those as we can at the end of the session. We're aiming to run for probably about 45 minutes or so today. Um, so we'll do some Q&A at the end of that um, as time permits. Obviously, uh, with recent events in the world, um, many more people working from home these days. Some online platforms have struggled more than others. Um, we're not expecting any issues on today's webinar, but if for any reason you do have uh, any connection problems or we have any issues with audio or video, we are recording today's session as usual, and we will do our best to get a uh, a consolidated recording of today's webinar out to all registrants as soon as possible after today's session. So if for any reason you don't see a link to that recording in the next day or two um, and you would like one, do please get in touch with us. There'll be some contact details later, but you can go to our website and contact us there um, and we will do our best to resolve that situation for you. So, admin out of the way. Without further ado, let's let's get into today's presentation and talk about what is, a, I think, a, a still a somewhat unusual um, and progressive journey from an SAP perspective um, with the adoption of DevOps at IPG. Before we begin, my name is Peter Yavsley. I'm the head of product marketing here at Basis Technologies. Uh, if any of you have joined uh, other webinars that we've done over the past couple of years, you'll no doubt have heard my voice. But more importantly, today uh, I'm excited that I'm joined by. Orhan Ozal from IPG, um, who is uh, one of the clients we've been working with for a number of years. Um, Orhan, thanks for joining us, and um, please give everyone a quick introduction to yourself and your experience in the world of SAP. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Um, this is, I think, our fourth um, joint presentation with Basis. I love all of it. Um, um, it's a great um, um, vendor of us. Um, and uh, they help us a lot along our dev, uh, ops journey a lot. Um, again, my name is Ohan Ozab. I'm responsible for uh, global SAP solutions at IPG. Um, so happy to share our experience and entertain any questions coming from your side. Okay, thanks Ohan. So let's, uh, let's move on to the agenda. So this is broadly what we're going to talk about in today's session. We're going to look at some of the challenges that uh, companies like IPG have faced and how they particular, in particular are adapting and why DevOps was part of the approach they've chosen um, and the journey they've taken to get to where they are today uh, and some of the key factors that uh, you need to consider when um, adopting DevOps for SAP based on the experience at, at, at IPG. We'll talk a little bit about tooling and tool chain and the importance of that and, and we'll finish with a few recommendations from all hands and top tips around DevOps before we move on to Q&A as the time allows in the session. Just before we begin, um, for those of you in the audience who aren't particularly familiar with Basis Technologies, uh, a quick introduction to who we are to give a little bit of context to today's conversation. Um, we create software automation which basically allows our customers to change the, one, the way they run and manage their SAP systems. And we do that by bringing the ability to adopt concepts like agile development, DevOps, and CICD, continuous delivery, into those SAP environments, which traditionally has been uh, challenging for a number of reasons, which we'll discuss today, not least because typical DevOps automation tools simply can't be used within SAP 
um, because of its uniqueness and its unique architecture and unique ways of working. So we offer the most complete DevOps and test automation platform that is crucially specifically engineered for SAP. I'll talk about what that means in just a second. Um, and we are a global organization uh, with offices around the world, uh, Europe, the Americas, Australia. Um, and as you can see from the slide here, we're working with a, a wide range of very well-known brands um, from very from small to very, very large SAP users, all of whom are seeing the benefits of applying automation in their SAP environments. And uh, I'm not going to get into the details of the, of the sales pitch in terms of tooling in today's uh, session, but the DevOps and test automation platform that I mentioned, uh, you can see on the screen here, consists fundamentally of two core products, Active Control, uh, which is our change and release automation product uh, to enable DevOps, and Testimony, which is our unique and quite revolutionary regression testing solution. And we're gonna focus on Active Control today from an ITG perspective, but if you'd like any more information about either Active Control or Testimony, of course, you can go to our website or get in touch with us. Um, and of course, both these products are fully certified for use on both NetWeaver and uh, S4 HANA. So, very much um, supporting all kinds of customers with this platform. So as I've mentioned, it's gonna be active control we're really focusing on today from a change and release aspect as part of this DevOps conversation, but we're gonna talk more broadly about, about IPG's experience with their journey to DevOps. So before we begin that, um, let's talk a little bit about IPG into public group as a company. Um, Orhan, uh, obviously, you're a very big organization, but maybe not a name that some of our listeners on the call today are so familiar with. Um, tell us a little bit about IPG as a company um, and, and uh, where you guys stand today. Uh, oh, Hannah, are you still with us? Oh, oh, sorry, I was talking on mute. <laughs> sorry. Um, IPG is uh, one of the world's premier advertising and marketing services company. Um, anybody who has watched, watched MedMan, uh, obviously one of our um, um, leading companies, McKen Erickson, is, um, is present there. Um, we have other companies like uh, Universal McKen, they are uh, leading uh, media company. Digital agencies like RGA, huge. Um, on healthcare side, we have FCB Healthcare and public relationship, we have Weber Shamvik. And by saying this, I really pretty much um, explain the service offerings that we have. We provide um, advertising, consumer advertising, digital marketing, communications planning, media buying, public relationships, any speciality marketing. We cover a variety of different marketing um, solutions um, we are based in New York City uh, but we have a global presence uh, we have offices over 100 um, countries um, serving around 4,000 clients with 54,000 employees a large organization um, what is the uh, objective of IPG uh, as, as I mentioned uh, IPG is the holding company uh, we set financial objective and corporate strategies for all, all agencies and we do something very important, promote open architecture that seamlessly connect and integrates the best IPG resources for our clients. If a client comes to us, like Microsoft says, that I wanna really have um, a global ad campaign for my products, we can deliver it around the world. Um, along that, uh, IPG establishes financial management and operational controls and also um, guides personal policies. In addition, all of these, the area that Im impacts me the most, we provide with common enterprise applications and technology infrastructure, including cybersecurity. Okay, okay so no is. doubt. Yeah, so no doubt with a, a, a company of, um, of your size and complexity, and as you mentioned, being responsible for those services for the whole group, obviously, um, a lot of challenges going on in that world. Tell us a bit about how things have changed in the ad industry in the 21st century. Yeah. Um, so advertising industry, like many other industries, have drastically impacted by, by digital revolution. I just wanna um, give a couple of examples or highlights. The very first one was mobility. Um, advertising changed along with it. Um, the market has become more responsible for driving 
mobile revenue because people are spending a lot of time on mobile devices. Because of that, bite-sized content is becoming more important, which means that people consume content on the fly. Content is getting smaller and smaller, and that needs to be delivered very quickly. And the other phenomena that we really see that we have a multi-layered media. Somebody sitting at this couch watching TV at the same time, maybe shopping on Amazon and and maybe sharing a, a, a photo on Instagram at the same time, um, you know, tweeting. So it is very important for us that when people are distracted so much to keep, take the attention of the people, um, giving very focused um, messages um, and, and, and create uh, advertise, advertisement that, um, you know, um, attract people attention. Um, also, the, uh, the customer's expectation increase, um, quality matters, and customer wants to know the real return on investment on marketing dollars spent. Um, because we have multiple um, marketing channels now. Um, and also growing importance of data. Uh, many um, marketing campaigns before and after needs to be supported by the data. So how are we, re go ahead, sorry. No, no, uh, please carry on. No, that, that, yeah. Okay, um, so I was just gonna say, uh, also um, fair to say, I think that, that digital disruptions manifested in in new competitors in your market as well, which uh, which uh, something that you guys have got to respond to. Is that also true? Yeah, that's very true. Um, you know, we um, we had an unprecedented competition from new ed tech companies such as Google and Facebook, but at the same time, very traditional consulting firms like um, Deloitte and Accenture um, um, also entered the market. And now we are not only um, competing with our traditional advertising um, uh, competitors, such as Omnicom, WPP, we are competing with new players. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more specifically about the internal challenges at IPG, because obviously every business has their own internal issues they've got to deal with regardless of, of how they respond to those outside pressures. Uh, talk to us a bit about what else is happening at IPG at the same time. From the top, I mean, our CEO came up with a motto saying that we need to do marketing that's built on human values, fueled by data, and driven by creativity. That was the thing that he wants us to focus on. Um, to be able to do that, we need to restructure in some cases, and we need to acquire some com companies. Very recently, we bought a data company called Axiom, and we integrated that into our um, agencies. Now they started doing joint uh, campaigns. Uh, also, um, another um, uh, proactive or reactive uh, action that we took is that um, the agencies adopt best of breed cloud-based digital products. And that requires uh, integration with the digital core. Digital core is SAP. Uh, so we have seen that they continue to registering the SaaS products and, and using them. Um, and also uh, the requirement from agencies is that uh, the business requires the fr frictionless sharing and flow of data among applications, people, processes, things, and platforms. Um, those are the, um, the digital. The other thing is that because we have open architecture and need to uh, support global clients, we have global presence. And from IT perspective, we have different centers. I have to uh, communicate and collaborate to serve our, um, our agencies as well as our clients. As we are open, a lot of um, agencies and also we have centers in around the world that we, are, we don't need to only comply with the US regulations, but the regulations of each and every country. So there's clearly a lot of IT challenges there as you try and respond to some new things in the market. Let's, we're gonna talk specifically about SAP today. So let's just focus on that for a second. Tell us a bit about how SAP supports IPG's business. Right. Uh, because IPG is a very dynamic organization that we are really restructuring continuously to meet our clients' demand. Uh, and also we are acquiring and growing uh, inorganically as well, buying a lot of new agencies. Um, we come to realization that at IPG level, we need to have a common financial and operational platform and a set of standard business processes. Um, so 10 years ago, we started 
10 years ago, maybe eight years ago, we started a big business transformation program that um, rationalize and optimize the um, financial and operational systems across the world. Uh, we have um, multiple um, non-SAP system as well as we have some regional instances. Um, through that optimization and rationalization that um, uh, we come up with single instance strategy, but we uh, quickly realized that maybe single instance is too ambitious. Uh, we settle on two instance. One is serving um, you know, traditional advertising and the other one is non-traditional advertising. We made a huge progress in terms of consolidating. I mean, we have around 300 plus different financial and operational system. Pretty much we reduce it to a dozen of um, system. Some of them are very small uh, countries in, in terms of revenue. We couldn't convert to SAP. Uh, the others are still in SAP and we are planning to consolidate in the near future. Um, so what is the objective of this? So we want to do the heavy lifting in terms of financial accounting operations and, and project management and other things and we provide them with the tools and we want the agencies focus on what they're good at, which is um, creating good commercials. Um, okay, makes sense. So, so you're in this world of, of digital disruption. You've got um, you've got to respond internally to the customers that you serve, and you've got what is quite a relatively streamlined but complex and large SAP estate. Um, and you guys chose DevOps as the way to move forward and uh, adapt and respond to that new new digital transformation and digital pressure. Um, why, why DevOps? Why was that the way you chose to go in terms of developing your SAP system? Yeah, um, as the presence of SAP got a lot bigger, I mean, again, we have, we, I mentioned that we have 54,000 employees around the world. Um, 40,000 of them are already using SAP. That's a quite large number. And, and, as I mentioned to you, that advertising become a very fast-paced, fast-paced uh, fast um, uh, industry. So when we were talking our users, business leaders, and corporate leaders, one comment that I keep on going that why can't we go faster? Obviously, we have a fear that we don't want to create any business disruption. Uh, God forbid, if anything is goes wrong and we cannot close the books and we cannot uh, bill or we cannot collect the cash, it's a big disruption for business. So we try to explain them we want to go fast, but at the same time, we want to drive uh, safely. So the concept of DevOps um, came up at that stage and there was a perception that it's very difficult to implement DevOps in SAP. We need to really do things plan in advance and we need to follow waterfall approach. But that was not the business reality. Everybody says, well, we want to go faster. Can you do that? Uh, and we investigated different methodologies. And the one that we really um, like uh, was DevOps, uh, because there was a, a continuous cycle and, and a feedback loop. Um, and we felt that um, with the business sponsorship, we can give a shot. So I know that that uh, continuous delivery piece and that increase in pace was, was very important to you. And we'll touch on that in a little while. Um, just one other question on this. Was there already a DevOps culture in IPG or was this something that, that uh, your, you as the SAP team initiated to bring in independently? Um, we heard that the agencies are using um, Scrum and Agile methodologies and, and DevOps because some of our agencies become a development shop, especially digital agencies. We were hearing with them and they were really trying to use um, or they are using the Agile approaches, but it wasn't a really a corporate-wide um, methodology or understanding of DevOps when we started. Okay, that's, was, that's, I, think that's, I think that's very interesting for a lot of SAP teams who are maybe wrestling with whether this is something that, that's for them. Um, but this, I think this quote on the screen is important and it's something you and I have spoken about in the past on a couple of occasions. And, and this, is a, this is something that, that you said that I wrote down in one of those other presentations. Uh, you said you can't just click your fingers and get started. Um, so let's talk a bit about your journey to DevOps. How did, how did you start? Did you go top down and bottom up or bottom up? Uh, what kind of timeline? 
talk us through a little bit about the journey from when you started to today. Yeah, I think I will say that biggest um, hurdle that I had internally is obviously we spent uh, years and years to train our technicians and consultants and even the consulting partners told us that, you know, um, we the best way to do SAP is even in it with ASAP, um, you know, many years ago that that uh, methodologies introduced is that it is a modified version of waterfall. OK, um, so in a way that we need to unteach people how to, to operate because people are in various conversations that internally people are saying, well, if you do that, you are going to make a mistake. And people were very uncomfortable uh, to work with a degree of uncertainty, degree of things are done in a different sequence. Um, so there was a, I mean, the biggest challenge that we had initially was to really retrain people, to, to rewire everybody's brain. Um, how do we approach it? Um, so we did a little bit of uh, um, top down and bottom up. Um, First of all, the the conversation with the business leaders, they said, we would like to go fast. Why don't we do things iteratively? Um, we said, yes. And the bottom up was, I really found a team which is friendly with uh, with, uh, with the Scrum and DevOps and on all the other methodologies, open-minded, willing to change. And collectively, um, you know, that group and the senior management agreed that we're going to choose a project. And the project that we chose was Fiori, okay? Uh, we are business suit on HANA. And we said for the front office people, they always complain about usability of, of, um, of SAP, not the finance people. We said, we're going to take all the front, um, front office facing business transaction converted to Fiori. And that was our, our project. Um, we took the first, as an example, timesheet because it's touching everybody around the, around the, around the world. And we built a mobile version and also desktop version using Fiori. And that was our first project. And we get some external help. And while we are designing the, the, the processes, but also we really acquire a number of tool set. And we were doing and figuring out things as we go. Um, so it was an interesting use case. It was a, a poster child within the organization, and that was very successful. Um, resulted in a lot of heated conversation in the organization. Training team wasn't happy that things are changing every day. They need to update training materials in the end of each sprint. Um, you know, client services were saying that, well, how am I going to support this? You're not giving me enough time to really train my um you know, support people. Um, but in the end, in, 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 in the works of the project that we learn how to collaborate, how to, I mean, again, they have seen the methodology, they come along. So that was, that was how we really started. And then, and then we really have a medium-sized project, uh, which was a resource management tool that we built. And the largest project that we are doing at the moment, around 100 plus people are working on it, is a revenue recognition project. Um, it's going to be, um, I will say, 18 months project, and we are envisioning that to have like 12, 14 different sprints. We're at the moment and the, and the um, eighth sprint, completing sprint eight. So we really ramp up. I would say this took like a two and a half years. The initial question about how was it, how, how did it take to really build the teams and acquire the tools and deliver the first um, you know, project, it took around four to six months, the first project, four to six months. And, but that was like a lot of learning curve and a lot of things to be figured that out. Um, again, um, revenue recognition project is going to be 18 months. I would say that if we do waterfall, at least it will take, and we haven't completed, it will take at least three years in my eyes. So it really accelerates okay. things. And I think, uh, you know, it's an important topic of conversation in terms of, managing realistic, realistic expectations for organizations that want to be successful with DevOps the way IPG has. And clearly the cultural piece is, uh, is a very significant discussion. It's a big discussion. You've mentioned particularly, you know, some of the implications for, 
for non-technical teams potentially there. Um, we're not going to focus so much on that today, um, but it's obviously a very important part of the whole conversation around DevOps. Um, so I think it's important that we, we've touched on that. But let's talk a little more operationally about what you guys did when you were implementing DevOps and some of the key things that uh, you and I have discussed as being um, really important things to consider during that process. So we've got we've got six key factors we're going to go through that have um, been a part of your journey. Uh, let's talk through those one by one. Um, first of all, we've got we've got backlog up on the screen there, and that might not be a term that is so familiar to everybody who's working in SAP. Uh, when we say backlog, so can you can you explain to us what uh, you mean by backlog when you're talking about that IPG and why it's such an important thing for you in this new DevOps approach? Right. So I'm sure that everybody's in Excel spreadsheet with a bunch of enhancement requests and, and project, right? But that's not a backlog in my in my mind. That's a central repository that there, there is a number of things that is asked to IT to be completed. Backlog in our in our mind is something different. Backlog means is that you get the request from different um, um, sources, like your um, you know uh, ITSM uh, software in our case in Remedy, or working committees, or business leaders, or or um, corporate units. Um, they come up with the projects. Um, your compliance team may be requiring certain things. What we do is we ask everybody to give their request as a story. Means that what are you trying to do? And that could be really high level story, could be epic. Um, uh, and then we put everything into a single repository, which is not an Excel spreadsheet, it's a dynamic list. In our case that we use combination of Teams, Microsoft Teams, as well as, the, um, as, a, as, well as Jira, okay? Which means that the, the request coming from different sources is stored in a single repository, reviewed together with the uh, business constituents and the project leaders and PMO, and continuously ranked. And, and you, look, you have a holistic view of what is requested, what is in development hopper, and what is stage to be worked on. So it means that you create a pipeline which is a clean, um, and consolidated and also rationalized and normalized and understandable uh, where the team is continuously reviewing it and, and defining the priority for the business. In our, in our definition, that's a backlog. Okay, and I think, uh, you know, it's one of those, uh, certainly we find with the, the clients we work with, it's one of those small words that can have some quite big implications, both in terms of mindset and practicalities. But, but let's, um, let's move on to our, the, the second point that you, you wanted to talk about, and that's collaboration and organizational effectiveness. And I, I think, you know, you've already touched on this uh, when we were talking about the, the journey and the process of, of getting to a more mature DevOps approach over time. But um, how has DevOps change the way your teams work together and uh, was your very distributed global workforce a, a big challenge in, in this area? Right. Obviously, as we are dispersed teams, globally dispersed team, we were using some collaboration tools already like Teams, Slack, um, you know, uh, Skype, etc. Um, it's not about um, only people talking to each other. Uh, it's more people working together and not waiting or not afraid of asking a question or waiting somebody to feed the information to them. In the whole dev cycle is that you really creating self-managing teams and you delegate the responsible to them and they work. The, the business analyst, the end user and the developer um, are working together and they have an open communication channel so that they can really uh, collaborate and create synergies. The second important thing is that part of the organizational effectiveness is because you are really eliminating rework because people are really giving feedback constantly um, and asking questions, uh, which is eliminating the rework. And also the more important thing is that people believe that they belong to a team. They're part of the solution. They're from, from the start to the end. They feel that uh, they've been included. 
Um, and the, the most important thing for us, the senior management, is also the visibility, right? When you have all this collaboration and the backlog and everything else, people can see where the project is, can really get a good understanding of the status and, and the challenges, even the, the, the um, personality clashes, the conflicts becomes more visible within the organization. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely true and it, that, that visibility and that constant communication is a, is a real change uh, with this kind of approach. Um, point three we have here in our six key features is, is this idea of release on demand. And it's another maybe small phrase with big implications could, could be um, quite an eyebrow raiser for some uh, SAP users. Um, what does release on demand mean mean in IPG and why is that such an important idea for, for you guys and what you're doing? Yeah, so we had, before we adopting uh, DevOps and, and, um, and Agile uh, methodologies, we used to have a major release and, uh, and a minor release. We were two releases in. It doesn't mean that we were not promoting high priority enhancement because it's a compliance requirement in Italy that a tax code have to be created, we create that. That's not a problem. Um, but the major enhancements and, and, and items were really delivered part of the two major releases of one major and one. And we changed that. We said, you know what? We're going to identify the scope in the backlog continuously. For budgeting purposes, we may need to um, you know, define saying that in this release, we are going to only work on 15, 16 items. And we may swap things in the, within the release if a more urgent thing comes in. Um, try to really make it a little bit more stable at the same time is that we said, look, we don't want to wait six months to release something because people even forgetting what they really ask for if they have to wait for six months. They don't need to wait for six months. We said, we're going to really do continuous integration, which means that when item is ready to be released to the production, we want to release it. And, and we're not talking about small items, big items. So. That is really the definition of release, release on demand. And and uh, what's enabled you guys to, to make that change particularly? Um, a degree of automation. Uh, that's very important uh, because if you go to if you have a if you really want to drive fast, right? You have a have, you need to have a car that can drive safely fast and you have the tools <laughs> and the methods to really do that. In our case, that automation tools enable us. Two things is very important release on demand. One, you need to have a test automation and also you need to have a, a, um, a tool like a release management tool like Active Control, which means that uh, you can really manage the life cycle of the, of the change from dev to QA, QA to production, a tool can really capture the authorization, not only authorizations from compliance perspective, but also provide you with certain dependency check. Uh, and, and active control really provides right shift and left shift um, functionality. There's a predefined 50, 60 different checks, uh, automated checks that provides that, for instance, if a version of the program is, um, is in a different transport, and then you try to release a transport and there's a dependency, active control is going to tell you that you cannot release this transport. If you do, I mean, you can release it if you want to, you can override, but if you release it, it's going to break the your QA environment because there's another transport, there's another include, which is in different program that, that has to go with, with, with the other transport. So it allows you to do automatic checks. I mean, you can do these checks manually, but it's very time consuming. Um, when you automate it, you can really move things much more safely. So uh, that was an example. So out of the box, active controls give you 50, 60 different controls. We don't use all of them. Maybe we use a dozen of them, which is useful for us um, to be able to really move things without worrying about business disruption. And on the other hand, testing tools, if you want to move fast, you need to automate your testing so that um, the functionality is works at the same time you need to really make sure that the regression testing is completed which is part of the okay, yeah. automation yeah obviously I, I i clicked on a little early there but you've um yeah you you, you i think you covered kind of both described of them. hard to, really, hard to really, <laughs> you know separate those three and four 
yeah no but i think i think that's a, also an important point important point to make in you know that uh, that those things go hand in hand and and the uh, the importance of automation in making this process a success um, so let's talk a little bit about um, as we're deploying and after we're deploying because the, the fifth thing you highlighted uh, in our conversations is monitoring um, not maybe central to your typical SAP professional developer or basis uh, admin life but um, to me an important thing it, Talk to us a bit about what you mean by monitoring and the kind of things that you're trying to measure and how you're doing it at IPG. Right. So obviously, when you are really uh, moving um, transports to to the system um, more frequently, you need to really monitor your system more frequently because there, there are more changes. I mean, from two sides. Uh, one, to make sure that op everything is operating as as usual, we use solution ma manager technical monitoring. Um, and also, we are trying to implement at the moment, which is related with the next bullet point, uh, data and impact analysis. We want to make make sure that um, you know the transactions that we really promoted to live is being effectively used by end users. So more sanity, I mean, from business perspective and technical perspective, that we we're just uh, monitoring our systems. So data and analysis for this one. We are about to implement Splunk, um, in, which is really analyzing the utilization of the individual um, transaction health of the system, um, various factors. So it, it is very interesting in a fast changing environment. Um, the monitoring is, is very important. Um, you don't want to be reactive mode that somebody, one of your users saying that, oh, I have a performance issue and because you promoted something um, to the to the system and then suddenly somebody is experiencing performance issues. We want to monitor that. I mean, solution manager and Splunk combination will give us that, that analysis and give us a feedback okay. about what we need to change for the future. Yeah, and I think that's a very important point you make there because in our experience, um, points five and six in particular would be generally uh, indicators of a, a somewhat more mature DevOps process. As you've said, you've been going for two and a half, three years. And, and of course, what we're not really showing on this slide, but is very important is the idea of continuous improvement through the process, feeding back into the backlog and how you, you know, reprioritize your work. And uh, I know that's something that you guys are, um, are focusing on um, to try and refine this process further. <clears throat> so um, we've mentioned uh, already, I think we've kind of touched on this, is that, you know, there's an underlying thread to to many, if not all of these elements in making DevOps a success, and that is the automation um, at, at various different elements. And we've talked about data, we've talked about change management, we've talked about test, uh, test automation. Um, you know, all of these things have an automation component. Let's uh, just, again, focus a little bit specifically on active control and the element that that's helping you with in this process. You've touched on a few of the things already, but um, can you kind of just give us a broad, kind of broad brush of, of how active control as, as, a, as a part of that DevOps process is helping IPG to, to deliver innovation faster and, and, and with the control that you guys need um, with the uh, compliance aspect that you mentioned earlier? Right. So, um... The active control, every change that we are planning to implement, we're creating something called business forms with an active control. And that business form is creating by a um, by a team manager saying that, okay, part of the, um, the release process, continuous integration automation process that I'm going to initiating this work. And then after that, and this is a very fundamental change. In the past, the team leads were creating transports. No longer the team leads are creating or uh, the, the transports, the individual consultants are really creating the transports. But what they need to do is they need to link that transport to a business form, which means that they have to really link a transport a change, an approved change for that week or upcoming weeks. Um, so that goes through a certain workflow um, that when, when work is done, you know, um, the um, developer testing is completed, unit testing is done, done, functional testing is done, and all the workflow within the, uh, within the organization takes place in active control, then uh, somebody approves it to go to QA. 
okay um, typically the um, team team leader um, and then the transport is done automatically we don't need bases anymore and um, you can really define these roles based on your requirements within the organization um, and then you move to QA you complete all the QA phases um, and again everything is recorded from audit perspective and active control um, goes to um, the UAT completed somebody reviews the UAT results and send it to the release uh, manager, which is an independent party. It looks at everything and then says, okay, this is good to go. Um, one step before, and again, all the checks and controls that are, and dependencies that I really mentioned is done by a, by, by the person that um, we, we call it the, uh, the, again, the team lead or, uh, or the area manager. Um, so he or she does all the checks and then release it to the release manager and release manager looks at it and it's gets all the approval from everybody else and the, the evidence that can go to production and then approves it and that transport is sec scheduled to go live in a certain time during the day i mean whenever it's convenient window transport window for you for your organization and then automatically done should there be any problem with the with the transport you have two options i mean notification sent from active control something is failed um, you can really um, fix it um, or you can roll it back uh, but our error ratio is i mean i think at the moment less than one percent i would say with active control significantly and also overall for transports because we have a lot of transport um, going on like we really save a lot of basis time as well okay cool i mean i think actually uh we're we're running up a bit against time so i'm going to move time. forward a bit more quickly i think you've covered yeah. a couple of these points uh, already but just to yeah. just to summarize um uh, i think you know in the discussions that you and i've had previously um these are the broad kind of uh, in that outputs and benefits that Active Control has, has enabled uh, in terms of IPG. Um, are any of these particularly more important than the other, or do they sort of come hand in hand? I, I, I think the most important thing for us for DevOps was the confidence. Can you do it? Can do it to you? Like people were really saying it's not possible to do DevOps agile with SAP. With the tools like this, they build the confidence. Um, and then and then you really show the people that you can go faster and then you can demonstrate that you increase productivity. That's sort of the sequence that I really look at it because we are a financial system in the end, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, well let's uh, let's move on again. We've got a chart here and this is a bit of a busy one, but it's a slide that we quite often use at Active Control when we talk about the process of, of delivering change in a DevOps flow. Um, and I think the key point just to talk about here, this is not obviously representing IPG specifically, but is about the importance of tool chain and integrating and, and preventing SAP from being so much of an island that you know it's maybe been in the past in an IT sense. So um, let's just talk a little bit about the uh, importance of tool chain at IPG. And you've mentioned before a couple of the things you're using. So tell us a little bit about how that fits together. Yeah, I think it's it's very difficult to do any um, any DevOps or Agile without uh, without toolchain, right? The ones that we are using at the moment, we are using Remedy for ITSM. Um, we use Jira and, and Teams uh, for collaboration and 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 also the continuous delivery part of it, backlog management, um, you know, the boards and and the management of the development. And um, we are using it, a tool called GSM, uh, our internal documentation tool, because we want to really keep all the documentation in a separate location. Active Control is being our um, release automation tool. Um, for testing purposes, we use HPQC um, uh, Quality Center and, uh, and all the tools related with it. Um, again, we are in the process of deploying Splunk for data analysis. Uh, for monitoring, we use solution technical monitoring. It's going to be complemented by Splunk. Um, pretty much these are the tool sets that we're just um, using at the moment. Okay, and again, in terms of workflows and how they fit together, we could probably do a whole other webinar, but I, I know you wanted to highlight the, the importance of this, as you've mentioned, and it's certainly true that it's uh, really the enabler for a lot of our clients who are looking at a more agile way of working. 
um, to connect these tools together in a, in a seamless flow and have best breed at each stage. So um, rounding off, getting to the end of, of today's presentation and, and sharing your experience, let's talk about, uh, we've talked about kind of what you've done and where you've got to and why, but let's just touch on what you've learned in that process. Um, talk us through some of the biggest takeaways that you've had over the past couple of years as you've developed with DevOps and SAP. I mean, you hear horror stories about um, so that how people try to do agile and try to really do things and it things terribly went wrong. It can go wrong if you don't have the right methodology, right people and right tools and right processes. But in our case, it's real. Um, it's a journey. I wouldn't really uh, bet all my money on DevOps and agile in the first project. I think, um, you know, I will iteratively like the definition of Dev, Dev, DevOps as well, iteratively build it, build a culture, build a tool set and start small and then grow. Um, so obviously you need to have a tool like Active Control um, to be able to do release automation. That's the, at Active Control is the kernel of this, this process um, as long as some uh, with uh, some other tools. Um, and in terms of active control implementation, it was very straightforward. We have done it since six weeks. The challenge was changing the culture, defining business processes, and um, you know um, that was the toughest part, not the tool. Um, in the end, one, once you really stay on the course and be tough, and there will be a lot of bumps in the road, and people want to tackle you to the ground, uh, you got to stay strong, and you got to really be keep focused, and then you will really see productivity gain savings in the end. Okay, great. I think that's a, a really good summary of where you've got to. So let's let's talk about um, some top tips. Uh, if you were speaking to someone on the call who was considering this approach, um, tell us about your kind of top tips for how to get started and what to do as a priority to get things moving. I think uh, in my case is that you need to get even at your CIA level or the a, a, a senior person, vice president level saying that, okay, I want to do this, but you do you support me? And then you need to go and talk to a business sponsor. So, um, I mean, I think I, I, this is how we did it is again, at least that you need to really cover yourself from IT perspective. If it is IT, they're one saying that you need to have a senior person to support you. And you need to find a business sponsor and tell her or him saying that, you know, what she or he will gain out of this, this implementation. Because everybody wants to really do things cheaper, faster, more iterative and more um, robust. So, and then second thing is find a project that is, and again, this goes hand in hand with the business sponsor. That business sponsor needs to like that, and that project has to be suitable for for agile. That if you really require something as very, you know, a compliance project, I wouldn't recommend start with a compliance project. Just find something is like more light, like user experience project could be a reporting project, uh, because that may be bump in the road as I as I mentioned before. The first project is, should be less risk. Uh, you have to really recruit some champions. And a very important thing is let them speak, uh, promote them. Um, so, you know, within your organization, rather than you really saying and, and promoting this, find people that will promote this work and make them visible in the organization. Um, set up your tool chain. Initially, you will do certain things manually, um, but you need to pick and choose what are the most critical things in your tool chain, where you really spend a lot of time, and where would you really have the automation so that you can go faster. Prioritize them and then start building up your um, tool chain. And don't expect um, you know instant result. Don't there, there there are no miracles in life, so you got to be patient. You know while you're building this thing, it's just going to take time. But when you really build it up, you can go faster. Okay, fantastic. And before we finish off, based on your experience, uh, if if somebody, you know, with a lot of SAP experience, said to you, uh, "We we don't we don't need DevOps. It's not going to give us any benefit, or we or we can't do that in SAP. It doesn't work properly." Um, how would you respond to that? What would you say to those people? Um, I would say that um, most probably your tool is going to be replaced by SaaS products or other products that are going to really deliver faster than you deliver. It's eventually going to happen. So you're going to be obsolete. That's my personal opinion. 
So uh, clearly, in, in the experience of IPG, it's, it's something that you can do in SAP, and it certainly can be a success following these kind of steps. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. So um, thanks very much, Orhan. So just to, to summarize what we've been through today, as I say, we've run slightly over time, but we'll go to some questions in a moment. Um, but at IPG DevOps for SAP is clearly helping the business to respond to new challenges, and that's very key in terms of adopting this new way of working. Uh, we're not doing this for the fun of it. We're not doing it because we like trying new things. We're doing it to help make the business more effective. And as Orhan has described, that was definitely a driver at IPG. Um, it's a journey, and in that journey, you can't ignore the people and the cultural impact. And we talked about a few really great examples um, of, of how that manifests um, uh, in practice. Uh, automation is key, and I think we've, we've really been through why that is. Um, and as we just mentioned, DevOps really can signifer, deliver significant gains, um, especially if you plan for continuous improvement, plan to build that process and get to a point where you can feed back from the end of your project back into the uh, the beginning of the process and that dynamic backlog that Orhan talked about. Um, and as I think we've, we've proven just with the uh, the example and the conversation around the success that IPG have had with this approach, your DevOps journey can start today and there's really nothing holding you back from making that change if you want to do so. So thanks very much for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned, we're slightly over time, so if you uh, aren't able to stay with us for the next five minutes or so, uh, of course, you can find more information on our website or you can contact us with the details that are on the screen here. You can also request a demo of any of our tools uh, on the website. Um, and if you do that, somebody will be back in touch with you very soon to follow up. Um, just in the last few minutes, uh, I want to take a few questions. Uh, just let me take a quick look. At what's come in here. Um, so, uh, so here's a question for you, Orhan. Um, how do you handle production support requests and enhancement together? What about very small production support fixes that need immediate attention? How does that fit in your process? Um, so typically, we have a separate budget for the production support that dedicated. Um, so we don't really put everything to enhancement and project budget and that enhancement is really done within the uh, weekly release so we included the uh, uh, break fixes on the weekly releases as a matter of again that's a new stream we start immediately with active control um, you can really see the dependencies if there is anything that is really held up by by other transport um, so you know we just um, we continuously Weekly releases contain enhancement project as well as the uh, break fixes. Okay, thanks. Um, I've just got a couple of questions around the recording and the content. So just to reiterate, yes, we will be we are recording the session and we will send out a link to uh, all registrants. So just bear with us for uh, a day or two. We'll get that to you as quickly as we can, but there will be a link to a recording of, of everything that all hands gone through in today's session. Um, got another here question here for you all and just uh, let me read it quickly um did you have to change your style as a manager to succeed with devops with this new way of working yeah absolutely i think that um i mean everybody every manager likes to delegate i mean the very important thing is that you got to delegate more and you got to be make yourself less visible and promote people underneath you so that they own it they promote it and they just like because if it's going to be top down, you're going to make all the decisions. I'm going to make the decision that this is not going to work. The whole point is that we're empowering people. The biggest uh, change is, is delegation, more delegation, and let people to make decisions. And if they make mistake, let them fail. They will learn it. Um, you know, obviously, you don't want to fail big time. But remember that failures are can be remedi remediated in next next um, cycle because they don't. You don't need to wait another six months to fix that. Everything is iterative, and and people learn from failure, and you will celebrate your failure as well, and then next time you will be more um, more successful. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so another question here. Um, I mean, certainly I can give a view from Basis Technologies on this one, but Orhan, I'll, I'll pass it to you. Um, what version or release of SAP or IPG on, and do you think 
DevOps can work with ECC6, uh, specifically yeah. EHP6, but ECC6 in general and, and going back a little it bit. Does. I don't think that this methodology has nothing to do with the releases of, of SAP. We are on um, ECC, business suite on HANA, uh, but this will work with S4, it will work on ECC. I mean, I think this is a uh, version independent. Mm, okay, and, and, and that's certainly control out. supports all the versions, right? I mean, I mean, that's your question to you, right? Uh, yes, certainly something like ECC six, no problem at all with Active Control, and uh, certainly would echo your point. In our experience, it's um, of course the tooling is very important, and some of that may need to fit the software that, that you're currently running. But basically, this approach is uh, uh, is, is, pla is 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 version agnostic in in a sense. It's um, somewhat conceptual a way of working. Um, another question here, which I will just take very quickly: um, Does Jira and the other tools you mentioned integrate with Active Control? Um, so certainly Jira, ServiceNow, Remedy, a number of other solutions do have out of the box integrations ready to go with Active Control and it's what a lot of our customers use. Um, Orhan, I'm not sure where you guys have got to with the uh, integration uh, with the third party stuff. Um, how far have you progressed with that so far? The project is in, is about to start. I mean, we had some other priorities, um, and at the moment, the integration that we do is um, is done by manually. But you know, there is a desire there to do the automation. We couldn't get cool. to it; and, it was uh, not priority. No, and uh, and as you say, like many of these things, it's a, it's a step by step process to get to where you need to be. But uh, to answer the question yet there, yes, uh, Active Control certainly does integrate with Jira and a number of other other tools as well. Um, uh, well, I think you've answered this one, Orhan, but I'm going to ask it just, just so that we have clarity for everyone. Um, do you think you can do DevOps in any way without the automation tools? Uh, you can do anything you like, but I'm saying that if you will not get the productivity and efficiency that you are envisioning to have without automation. 